1-866-740-0740 or toll free at 1-866-740-4740. Welcome back. Well, this is going to be a, a remarkable half hour, I think, uh, from a remarkable uh, young man. Alan Park is uh, an actor, writer, known, of course, for his uh, uh, work on the Royal Canadian Air Force, the long-running sketch comedy program up here in Canada, the Wall of Comedy, uh, pop-cultured, with over three decades of stand-up comedy experience and multiple seasons as the principal on the CBC television's Royal Canadian Air Force, Alan Park uh, brings a wry wit and a spot-on comic observation to some of the darkest, scariest things out there, things other shows don't even want to ask. And, of course, he is uh, also the host of the uh, the podcast Conspiracy Queries, which ran for a, a while on Sirius XM. He's got a brand-new podcast out called Green Crush, and he's here to tell about his uh, remarkable battle, uh, one that he appears to be winning, uh, a battle with cancer. Alan Park, great to have you on The Conspiracy Show. How are you? I'm very well. I'm happy to say the numbers are great. How about that Trump? <laughs> How about that Trump? What's going on there? Why did I come back for this? <laughs> you know, I was on the other half, right? I was I was going down the chute. I was circling the drain like a penny at the carnival when it comes out of those gumball machines. And I was almost at the end of the spiral. It was just about at the bottom. And we had Harper and Bill C-51. And it was terrible. And everybody was saying, Justin, Justin, let's change the whole thing. And now they've changed the whole thing. And now I'm back. And I kind of don't know why I'm doing that sometimes. I've asked the prime minister to look in, by the way. I hope you're looking, sir. I know when I contacted you, you said, you got to wait a week before you reply to these type of emails. But I hope you're catching the show anyway. Having a good summer. Alan, I'm, I'm concerned about your lack of energy. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's let's begin with your uh, your diagnosis. Uh, yeah. What what type of cancer did you have, and when was that diagnosis made? Well, November twentieth, twenty thirteen, was the culmination of a gradual and building year of pain uh, beyond all description. And I'm not saying that for sympathy, although I must. might have at the time if I. So there's a lot of people out there that have this thing that are petrified. I know that because I was one and I've managed to do things about it. So there's a lot of people maybe listening to this right now or watching this. And, and uh, I hear you. It's really scary, but um, I can guarantee it's way better to just say, hey, I've got this. Help me out. And what kind of cancer was it? Stage four prostate that had already metastasized into much of my bones. Uh, they called it aggressive and advanced. Stage four. Yeah. Uh, so the prognosis was what? Uh, okay, so well, I got diagnosed November twentieth, and then they have to, you know, that's a pretty dire diagnosis. You'll have to, yeah, yeah. stage four. And so they yeah. want to leap right into action and get on it with the specialist. And so then five weeks later, five weeks later, I'm uh, I'm going to see the specialist. And um, before I got there, though, I decided to do cannabis oil. And we can get into that in any detail you like, but just to say, fast forward and try to, you know, put people's mind at ease. As soon as I got the diagnosis, I was aware that I needed to do this. It was in the news. I'd heard about it. And to be quite honest, something came into my head and said, you need to get involved in medical cannabis. And I kind of argued with it. You know, I said, but I haven't smoked a joint in a long, doesn't matter. You need to get into medical cannabis. And that was just before the diagnosis. And uh, so I did. I procured it three days after the uh, after the diagnosis. I went to YouTube, thanks, and um, Googled up how to do this and uh, to make the oil. And I was petrified because of the steps involved. And then I started taking it. And three days later, I was I was kind of out of pain for the first time in many many months. And then uh, on the way to this uh, urgently uh, necessarily scheduled thing, five weeks later, uh, somewhere in between Christmas and New Year's, I think it was. Um, I got the news uh, that that it was stage four and it was so aggressive. Had a PSA level of seven hundred. Um, I guess a lot of my maybe a lot of the listeners don't know if they're if they're younger or or if they're female. Sometimes they don't know, but the PSA score is a prostate specific antigen, and I had a seven hundred. Not good. Now you're supposed to top out at around two point five three four of the max. Mm. The big thing is when it doubles. If you ride a four and I ride a two. You're okay, but if I double over to the four, maybe I have a problem. So anyway, that's immaterial when you're at 700. So, and I'm laughing because I got it, because I'm here, because I earned it, because I got it back. 
But um, it was funny to find out that after five weeks of taking this regular oil, before I got to the expert diagnosis slash prognosis, before I got to be told, uh, you know, what the options were or weren't going to be, this is immediately on the heels of the diagnosis. Right. And they were recommending aggressive, what, radiation, chemotherapy? No, before we get to that, though, I'm saying my PSA had had been knocked down to 374, and this puzzled the fellow no end. And so at that meeting, uh, he then, I, you know, what, what am I good for? What are we going to do here? And he uh, informed me that I was uh, well beyond the use of chemotherapy. Well beyond. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, was too, I was too far beyond for that. And radiation, there was nothing available for me in a, um, in a restorative sense. So he said, go home and get your things in order. Yeah, he gave me about 10 to 12 months, so that would have put it at uh, Halloween or Christmas that year. That would have been 2014. So I'm looking forward to the third anniversary of my third of my funeral <laughs> this year. <laughs> How do you take the cannabis oil? Uh, anally. Um, it's so, a family show, Alan. Yeah, I do, though. It's called the suppository. Okay. It's a suppository. And uh, I also take it in, a, in an oral sense. Now, you don't just take it all the time. It comes in a course. It's called Rick Simpson oil for a reason. Rick it's, Simpson. That name is familiar. Yeah. Uh, He's now, Canadian. Yeah. And yeah. wasn't he sort of exiled in Eastern Europe at one point? Uh, at one point, and I don't think he's very welcome right now from no. what I know. I haven't been able to speak to him. I sure would like to say thank you, though, because he's got a crazy little recipe that worked really well for me. And how did you, are you able to tell us how you got it? Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. So you have to obtain cannabis and you have to get it right now because you're at stage four and there's nothing else going on and even if you're going to get top flight care which i had to wait five weeks to find out i wasn't going to have any of that Mm -hmm. um you want to get busy because by the time they retest you to commence the conventional treatment um you're going to have different numbers and you're going to know why that is so you can't really lose anything. People say, people, uh, you know, they get really uptight about the, the whole allopathic thing. You should listen to your doctor. And I say, I did listen to my doctor. He gave me no option. But I had already started doing this before the, right, the right. official, you know, what are we going to do? What's our plan? Right. And you see the results. I mean, I was out of pain. I was able to lift my legs again and, and bend down to the floor. All kinds of things that had been dwindling away from me all summer. I, mean, I, I, uh, I have, uh, we have uh, mutual friends that were with you sort of, you know, uh, w- while you were on death's door. So I know yeah. this, this is the real deal. This is legit. So yeah, two bounces. That was, uh, you, you kept saying in the intro, I think it was twice. It was twice. Yeah. All right. Let, we're going to take a time out. Uh, Alan, sure. stay with us. Uh, I mean that for a long, long time. We'll uh, come back and uh, continue to talk about cannabis oil and cancer. Alan Park stays with us and we'll tell you about his new podcast, Green Crush. The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Passcodes, social insurance numbers. If they make you wonder how private they are, here's two more numbers. 416-360-0740 or toll free at 1-866-740-4740.
you're about to leave everything you know behind on The Conspiracy Show with Richard Serrett from Zoomer Radio. And we are back with Alan Park, comedian, former cast member of the Royal Canadian Air Force and uh, the host of the podcast Conspiracy Queries. He has a new one uh, called Green Crush. He's here telling us about his uh, battle uh, with cancer. Battle, he kicked its ass. And uh, we are discussing the possible role uh, that cannabis oil uh, played in his recovery. Is Are you cancer-free now, Alan? This is a bit of an unknown because I go for blood tests on a regular basis and all my numbers are testing normally and everything's fine, but I have to keep going because once you ding the stage four bell, you got to keep showing up for class or then you might get worried about you. Uh, and so do you, do you remain on the, the Rick Simpson oil regimen as a chin or how does that work? Yeah, I go on and off of it in a, in a, you know, as long as you're sort of a Ag every once in a while, so to speak. I mean, I did the course. The course is a 90-day course initially, and uh, that's 60 grams of consumption of this oil. Now, we can talk about the numbers and everything, but basically, you're taking one plant, which reduces down to one pound is one plant, and one plant is 60 grams, and you whistle that in over 90 days. There's a lot of really neat, even numbers there, and um, it's really effective if you keep at it. Basically. What we don't seem to realize and what we don't hear while the policy is being set about how we're going to be arresting more people and we're, you know, these people that are setting the agenda for cannabis moving forward or self-proclaimed, uh, they don't use it. They're avowed non-users, which is kind of like having a sommelier at the liquor store who doesn't drink. <laughs> so we got to we got to take the, we got to have the different perception here that the folks that don't want it and don't like it and don't understand it are the ones setting policy. So. I had to do that right away. I didn't have to fill out forms and wait. I just had to jump in because I was going to die real soon. And when you realize that, that the paperwork is a formality, if I waited for it, I could have waited three or four months before I was legal. Right. So, you know, it's, it's kind of important. But that, the thing I wanted to get at scientifically was that we have these systems in our body. We, we have our, our digestive system and our cardiopulmonary system and our, our lymphatic system and the electromagnetic system system of all the impulses in our body, but we also have an endocannabinoid system. And um, this is a documented fact. It's been known for years since the 60s um, and is basically starved to death uh, in your body if you don't consume this stuff. This is a food. So there are receptors. There are, there are cannabis receptors, receptors in, the body. in yeah. the body. And it's like being a vegan who insists on being a vegan and then doesn't compensate that he's not getting B12. So you have to go and get B12 somewhere or you're going to get deficient. And when you get deficient, you get ill. Right. And I think that's what happens to pretty much everybody. Because Interesting. It's been illegal. Now, the, the second uh, diagnosis, you, you were diagnosed with cancer again. Yeah. Well, I had a great year coming out of it. So I was originally stricken in 13. Uh, 14 was great by Easter. I couldn't believe how magical and 100 percent things were. Um, but then it's true. I did start to slide down again at the end of the year. And after into the new year of 15, I was crashing hard and harder than ever. Um, I subsequently found out that the, the oil I was taking at the time was from a, a less than potent batch. Uh, at the same time, the cancer was kicking back in and I plummeted further. Now my PSA is at uh, 1195, 1200. Oh my gosh. And I got diagnosed at a different hospital. I wanted to get into a different system. So I headed over to Durham County outside of Toronto mm -hmm. uh, and not get involved with my old records because I had a funny feeling, you know, that they'd, they'd more scold me for disappearing for 10 months than, uh, <laughs> than help me out. So, and, and I got a great ride out there at the uh, Rouge Valley Hospital system. They were fantastic. But uh, that doctor said he could do things and help me. So I took a shot of radiation at one point in my back um, about 30 times what Rob Ford took over a month. Apparently I learned mm -hmm. later. And uh, that fried it. And, and, but here's the thing. That was only supposed to last for five to seven months as pain relief. And then every time you do it, the months are consecutively shorter. And uh, I've never gone back. So that's been, that's been over two So years you were now. able to determine, how were you able to determine that the batch of cannabis oil that wasn't working and that it was not a, 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 a properly concentrated oil? It's so easy. You can't believe it. Because once you're up and acclimatized to the oil, you, you lose a lot of the sensation of being high per se. You know, you're, you, that's the whole point. You're taking it in such a nominal dose that you then begin to tolerate it like a guy that drinks a lot. I can't only have a couple of beers myself. Somebody else can hold six or seven. And, you know, mm -hmm. if I did that, I'd be on my face. You know what I mean? Right. So 
there's different strengths of it. So what happened was when, once I was sick and collapsed and the whole thing and went for the whole hospital ride and, and, and managed to get out again sometime around uh, uh, early May and get back on my feet at 135 pounds. I'm six foot, by the way. That's no good. No. Um, by the time that happened, I realized to go back and test that stuff. Now, I hadn't been on it for three weeks. Okay, so I, I didn't use it at all. And then you lose your tolerance again. And if you take a small amount again, you have to build up your tolerance. Right. And I smoked some and I ate some and nothing happened. I didn't get high at all. I'm done. To find out retroactively that the stuff was active and it was just crummy junk that uh, unfortunately came my way because it's sometimes illegal. And well, it was illegal and, and you can get ripped off. So people can take advantage. And I'd had several good batches of of cannabis that I synthesized into my own oil, uh, but this batch wasn't any good. So we should uh, just talk a little bit about uh, Rick Simpson. Yeah. Now, he, my understanding was he used to work in a hospital. He was an engineer. Yeah. And he contracted uh, skin cancer, possibly from working with asbestos. Mm -hmm. And he he uh, had read somewhere, I think it was in a medical journal about um, uh, cannabis oil uh, killing cancer cells in mice. So he applied it topically. Right. The cancer was gone, but he mm -hmm. couldn't get anyone to any doctor to sort of acknowledge. To vouch for it. Yeah, That's it's right. really difficult. <laughs> and then at a certain point, he was growing. I think he was, when he was arrested, he had 2,600 plants or something. Yeah. Oh, that sounds nice. And they, uh, anyway, so uh, I'm not sure where Rick Simpson is today. I've heard he was sort of. I heard uh, he was in Croatia, but I don't really know yeah. that. Uh, I'd like to find out. I see him pop up on Facebook or what have you in videos at time to time. Seems fairly recent, you know, so I, I know he's out there someplace. But listen, we have to know who Rick Simpson is. This is the guy that pioneered the thing that got me through. Yeah. And I'm not the first guy. I'm just the first guy with a big mouth that used to be on television that wants to get everybody that anybody that's remembering that I was on the show Air Force. He used to play different characters and Im imitations. I was on there for 10 or 12 years. So if you remember me, maybe Maybe you don't recognize me with long hair and glasses. Things have happened. Stuff's changed. But I want to tell these people that I am reachable. You can find me on the Internet. Listen to Green Crush. We're telling everybody what's going on with the laws and the science and the law and, 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 and the history and the impact of it. And um, Tell us about uh, the podcast, Green Crush. Where can we uh, hear it? Well, you can hear it on uh, YouTube. You can dial it up on you know, Green Crush, Allen Park. Check it out there. Google it up. Uh, we've got a we've got a page uh, uh, Green Crush at Podbean uh, dot com. Probably screwing that up. My manager's freaking out. Sorry, Kim. Um, Look that up, Albert, if you could. Yeah, Make you sure that we have that the right up. One. It's all new. It might be mostly focused on the content rather than the the uh, corporate handles of where you can find it. But it's on iTunes and and Stitcher, all the platforms. And uh, well, just tell me, uh, what is it? Is it like a 45 minutes? Or how, how, what's the length and the format? What it's you... been hitting about an hour and 10 for some reason. Okay. Just let me get a drink here. All right. It's I have to say. It's, pod, it's on Podbay? Podbean. 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 Yeah. Okay, yes, it is. So if and I have to say, I really enjoy talking on an actual telephone. This is so pleasurable compared to the fighting with the, uh, the electronic, you know, what's every day. There you go. Um, how about that? We, we, we forget about talking into a telephone. Well, Green Crush <laughs> is this. The green, of course, is the cannabis. The crush, of course, is that it's crushing the cancer. And it's also going to crush the laws that are preventing access. Because you can't say it's not a helpful medical property. I'm just so sorry. As long as people keep saying, oh, it's only anecdotal. Well, this is my anecdote. I'm still here. I right. was told it wasn't going to be. So I'm on the other side of the card. I feel like I sat through the movie. I stayed for the funny stuff at the end of the Avengers. And they started playing a different movie. And they didn't ask me for a ticket. There you go. Yeah, you even sat through the uh, the Hal Needham uh, yuck yuck reel at the end of Cannonball Run. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, I really feel like that. This is all bonus to me. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons why it's still illegal. And we hear about, you know, seatbelts and, and blowing heavy on, uh, in the cars. There's a lot of other things. Well, medical marijuana, though, is not. Way. I mean, medical marijuana is not. So, um, Well, the promotion of medical marijuana is not about Rick Simpson oil currently. No. It's about its symptomatic relief for your chemo yeah. or its symptomatic relief for your radiation. And yes, we know it puts you to sleep. But what they're not getting to is the fully restorative in the endocannabinoid system. Because once you start using the endocannabinoid system and priming that pump with this oil, now you're tipping out. The, the, the endocrine system, the, the endocannabinoid system is now functioning with the brain. That's part of the brain, which does have a gateway. To, they call it a gateway drug, and they just backed off of that. They said marijuana is a gateway drug. 
to terrible other things. And now they've backed off that because the science is showing it. And that, that was a lie, just like the war on drugs. But the best thing about it is it is a gateway drug. They were right about the gateway. They were just wrong about what too. It's a gateway to that brain stem that's attached to the endocannabinoid system. And here you go with juicing up your hypothalamus. Look it up. Picking up uh, action on your thalamus. You're using the different parts of your brain. I know there's a ton of people right now laughing. Good. Have a good time laughing at the fact that while you can also work out your body, you can grease it up with this oil, with this oil, and it helps you facilitate those different parts in your brain that are often ignored. The, the hypothalamus, the pineal gland, which opens up into seeing all kinds of things. And um, we do know that the brain is a key tool because uh, the powers that be, of course, the other section of this show, the conspiracy angle, they, they, do like to, um, they do like to put things into the amygdala. That's the fear center. You can't govern this place. This crazy world, like you said, is upside down. Uh, you can't govern it without fear. And they know this. The science is there. They're, this is part of the reason why they're delaying things. So that's why I'm happy to be on your show, because it is about cannabis and helping yourself. But there's reasons why it's been uh, off the market for 100 years as a medicine. Well, that's right. I mean, it used to be found in every doctor's uh, little black bag. was all a little bit of, of cannabis oil. That's yeah. right. Well, it bears repeating, uh, Alan, you were diagnosed stage four stage prostate four. state cancer, mm -hmm. and it had metastasized. It yes. was in your bones. Yep. I mean, that's lights out. Yeah. That's Except when you can arrest and reverse it, it's not lights out because here I sit. Now, it strictly didn't lead to the cannabis doing that. I also found out about heavy-duty vitamin C infusion. I took some in my arms. There's a controversy there about that right now, but I skipped past that anyway with a thing called liposomal vitamin C. Liposomal vitamin C was something that came to me while I was experiencing the uh, THC capacity of cannabis. So let's not get all fixated about removing the THC. Let's take this out. It's immoral if somebody is to have a, <laughs> open a different part of their mind. You just keep it all together, whole plant, take it all in, amino acids, proteins, uh, um, you know, everything is in there that you need. You should be taking it every day. You should be juicing it like wheatgrass, making ice cubes out of it, and taking <laughs> it in daily so that it's a nutrient. And I'm saying this about the male plants as well. I know a lot of the guys like to sell, you know, the female plants are what, you know, causes the psychotic psychosis that everybody's afraid of and reefer madness, the getting high part. But what you need here is the male plants are also a very much helpful function. Juice them up and eat them as well. All right, Alan, we are out of time, but listen, oh, let's, uh, let's. No, I'm not. That's the cool thing. <laughs> yes, you are not out of time. <laughs> we are out of time. God Thanks, bless buddy. you, Alan. Again, Thanks, the uh, buddy. Green Crush. It's yeah. uh, the podcast is available at Podbean. Thanks very much. All and right. YouTube and Google. Check it out. All the best. Thanks. My thanks to Ian Robertson, Albert Vinzel, Ryan White. Back next week, Jeremy Kagan, director, directed uh, Columbo, Chicago Hope, West Wing, also uh, Roswell, the movie. He'll be here to talk about that. His new movie, Shot, with uh, Noah Wiley. Rosemary Ellen Guiley will be here as well. In the meantime, don't be afraid. There's nothing concealed that won't be revealed and nothing hidden that won't be made known. What you hear in the dark, speak in the light. What I say in a whisper, proclaim from the housetops. Move over, Aphrodite. I'm coming home. Good night.